At what point does Jeezy link up with Puff Daddy and everybody? Jeezy links up with Puff Daddy probably in the same time, 2004. 2004, but I think, you know, he already had new Jazzy Faye and blocking all them. He already knew them from just being in the streets and being out and having money and being in the club doing your thing. So he already knew some of them people. But once he got with blocking them, called, you know, Block the one who put together Boys in the Hood. So once they brought Jeezy on, and and then I mean, I think Puff Daddy came in then. So I think Block and Jazzy Faye already had relationships with Puff. So once Jeezy got on there and did what he's supposed to do, and we was already buzzing from Streets is Watching and Trevor Die. So it was only, you know, it was only right. So they came, he signed a deal with them, and then Def Jam came with a solo deal for him. And that's when he signed both of the deals at once. Bad Boys and Def Jam. And and Meech had offered him a deal before that? Yeah, Meech had offered him like two or three million to come and sign with them. Two or three million. Yeah. You know, that's why Meech was playing the game, letting Jeezy drive the Porsche truck, let Jeezy drive the Ferrari. But at the same time, you know, you're talking about Jeezy. He could have went and got his own Ferrari. He could have went and got his own Porsche truck. But, you know, they was friends. So that's what it was. Jeezy didn't want to sign with Meech. How come Jeezy didn't want to sign with Meech? I mean, why? I mean, any smart man wouldn't want to sign with Meech. He's not a record label. Like, we know what's going on. Like... Him signing to Meech, what would that do? But probably had him in the feds right now. Like, everybody knew what was going on. Like, but the thing about it, why would he sign with Meech? Okay, we signed with BMF. BMF can't get us in Walmarts. BMF can't get us in record stores, Targets. It's just, it's just be some more niggas signed to some more drug kingpins. And you got to think about it. Everybody's been in the streets forever, so any smart man wouldn't make that move. Like, come on now. Okay, so Meech didn't have a plan. I mean, you to know, Jeezy, you know, Jeezy probably would have did it if it wasn't for Kinky being coach, probably shooting that shit down. That he probably would have signed with him, but it didn't happen. It was bigger deals on the table. Like BMF wasn't bigger than Bad Boys and Def Jam. So how much did Jeezy sign for with with uh, Bad Boy and everybody? Def Jam. Um, you know, I really. That's that was, but you know what I didn't hear. That was really like I, I didn't. I, I never was in that type of shit as far as what niggas getting paid and all this. But I'm sure he got about. I'm sure he got about four or five million to sign, and then I'm sure he got another two million for signing CTE to the label too, to Def Jam. They gave him a whole. They gave him a whole another two two million for the label. And then, and then he, but you know, it's a lot of shit that come along with that. There's deeper stories about all that and all this. Cause one thing I don't want to do, cause at the end of the day, you know, I only hold loyalty to one person, man. One person, that's Coach K. If it wasn't for Coach K, it wouldn't be a Clemenza. So I don't want nobody on here thinking that I'm, that I'm bigging up Young Jeezy. Cause I, he don't f with me and I don't f with him. And that's what it is. So I, he's just part of my story. So, but yeah, he got some paper for that shit. Cause after we signed the deal, we moved out of the house. It was a little house. We moved into a three million dollar house in Alpharetta right after the deal, and that's when everything changed. Everything went up. You mentioned you guys were on tour with Little Wayne. Yeah. Yeah. Man. How how did that go? Oh, um, the tour with Lil Wayne was that shit was dope because it was all it was all what they call them amphitheaters outside. So, and this is back this is back before Drake and Nicki was big as they was. You feel me? This was they weren't as big as they was yet. But I remember Drake had did something to his foot, and he was on. He had like a cane. His knee. Is that when he messed up his knee? He might have been, yep, yep. And he had the cane, yep. Messed up his knee. Yeah, we was on tour with them the whole tour. That tour was dope. We had fun with Cat. We had fun with Birdman and them. Birdman and them was gambling every day. And you know, and you know, we used to, 
you know they were you know they used to claim blood. You feel me? So you gotta understand, we had real crip members with us. I mean, I don't know if they had real blood members with them, but we had real crip members with us. So our crip members used to be extra at the shows. They used to come out in the all blue dicky suit with the ancient mama blue rag on the head. You know what I'm saying? So, but everybody was love. It was all love that tour. It was all love that tour. Yeah, that Wayne tour was dope. Is there any stories or anything you can share from them? From the Wayne tour? No, not really, because that was a tour where we weren't allowed to do parties afterwards. Yeah, Lil Wayne tour, like Live Nation, you couldn't do no after parties. It was just straight tours. You know what I'm saying? Because they said you have some people that would not go to the tour, but go to the after party. So they wanted everybody to come to the tour. It wasn't no after party. You only could see us at the tour. So... That was a good it was a good marketing thing, you know? Cause it was sold out every night. I mean that's a good strategy to make sure everybody goes there, but that kinda sucks, no party. Yeah, that kinda afterwards. suck how they the money up. The after parties, you know? Yeah, the club but money. We did, we we was taking show. We was taking after party. But I really wanted an after party was like, you know, walkthroughs. We go to the strip club, get paid, they give us ones for coming, give us free drinks and still walk away about twenty thousand. You know, that's what we did sometimes. But I really had no really, because that show, that that was one tour that was straight business. You know what I'm saying? And the Blueprint 3 tour with Jay-Z was straight business. So, yeah, a lot of our tours were straight business. Like, except for the tour we did with Jim Jones and T.I. and all them, that shit was kind of, um, that shit was, that shit was fun. You know, I got some stories about there about we had we had two security guards that was having a giving head to a female contest in the hotel room. Crazy shit. <laughs> Damn. And no lie, okay. I think no, that was before the drama beef, the DJ drama beef. That was way that was that was that was after that. Cause when we was beefing with DJ Drama, T.I. had kicked him off the tour because we was beefing with him. So and that tour, that, that might have been the same tour. That was the same tour. Yeah, that was the same tour I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay, well, let, let's jump into the DJ Drama uh, stuff. Well, so how did all that start with you guys in DJ Drama? What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.